Hello everyone. In this quick video, I'm going to walk you through a problem that will show you how you can use Macer's schedule, which is short for Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System, to calculate the depreciation of an asset and then how that depreciation influences that asset's book value at the end of its useful life and also how it influences its after-tax salvage value. Okay, a lot of finance jargon that I've thrown your way. Don't worry, we will demystify it in just a minute. So here's the problem. So an asset used in a four-year project falls in the five-year Macer's class for tax purposes. Okay, so this means that this asset is going to be used over four years, but the modified accelerated cost recovery system says that you have to depreciate it as if you're depreciating it over five years, so a five-year master schedule, the asset has an acquisition cost of 5.7 million and will be sold for $1.8 million at the end of the project. So 1.8 million represents what we call the salvage value or the scrap value of the asset, which is what it is worth in the market or expected to be worth in the market at the end of the four-year use. Now, if the tax rate is 21%, what is the after-tax salvage value of the asset? That's the question. Now, here is what the Macer's or Maker's schedule looks like. It will show you how to depreciate an asset depending on which class it lies in. If it lies in the three-year class, for example, this says that in the first year, you should depreciate 33.33% of the acquisition cost. In the second year, you should depreciate another 44.45% of the acquisition cost and so on and so forth. If it's in the five-year class, the percentages are different. In the seven-year class, the percentages are different. And so in our example, the asset falls in the five-year maker schedule. And so what is going to be relevant is basically this schedule for us. Okay. So I'm going to use this table to show how this will work. At time period zero, which is today, we're spending $5.7 million, which is the acquisition cost. So 57,000,000. So 5.7. Okay. We need to increase the width of these cells. So $5.7 million. Okay. Now, in the first year, your depreciation is going to be 20%. So you're going to do equal to 0.2 times this number right here. Okay, which means that your depreciation in the first year is going to be 1.14. In the second year, it's going to be 32% of the same number. Okay, so you don't subtract the depreciation from the initial number and then calculate 32% of that. No, it's 32% of the acquisition cost, which means this number is going to be 0.32 times 5.7. Third year is going to be 0 0.192. So 0 0.192 times the initial acquisition cost. And in the fourth year, this number is going to be equal to 0 0.1152, which is how much you're depreciating in the fourth year. So 0 0.1152 multiplied by 5.7. Now, for reasons that I will explain in just a minute, what I'm going to do is also calculate accumulated depreciation, which is the total depreciation of the asset that is happening over the four years. Obviously, in the first year, it's just equal to what it depreciated in the first year. So that is that. But And I'm going to increase the width here as well. In the second year, it's going to be however much it's depreciating in the second year plus however much it depreciated in the first year, which is 1.4. And so there's that. In the third year, it's going to be equal to this plus this number. And here it's going to be equal to this plus this. So the total depreciation that has happened over the four-year life is basically 4.715. This is how much the asset is total depreciated over four years. Now, the reason why this accumulated depreciation number is useful is because it can allow you to calculate how much the asset is worth on your books at the end of each year. Specifically, at the end of the first year, if you bought the asset for 5.7, and by the end of the first year, the total depreciation has happened is 1.14. This means that on the books, the asset is basically worth 4.560. 
by the end of the second year, it has depreciated a total of 2.964 million. So now the book value of the asset is 5.7 minus the 2.964. So it's obviously it's worth less. At the end of the third year, the total depreciation is higher, which means that on the books, it's worth even less. And finally, at the end of the fourth year on your books, it's worth 5.7 million minus whatever much it has depreciated. So it is worth about $984,960. Now you're wondering, why are you showing me this? Well, because this will have an impact on the after-tax salvage value of the asset, which is the question that is being asked. So you were told that the salvage value, which is what you can salvage the asset for, is going to be 1.8 million. So 1800000. The problem is that if you sell an asset for more than what it is worth on the books, which is its book value, IRS comes along and it says, hey, you're making a profit. Technically, they say you're making a capital gains. And so you owe us taxes on that capital gains this means that when you thought that you're going to get 1.8 million from selling the asset actually you have to net out the 21 percent that you owe on the difference between what you're selling the asset for which is 1.8 minus what it is worth on the books by the end of four years that is why I was calculating the book values. I wanted you to see how book value is going to look like at the end of the four years. Sometimes you will see questions in which the asset is being depreciated straight line down to zero. And in that case, the calculation is rather simple. You, know, you just have a zero instead of this nagging 984,960. But in situations where you do expect the asset to have some book value at the end, then you have to understand what the implications will be for how much you'll be paying in taxes. And so now what you will take home is 1.8 less the 21% that you owe on the difference between 1.8 and 984. And when you'll do that math, that is $1.628 million. And that is the after-tax salvage value of this asset. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning!